it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Today I have brought you this project. This is a project using items from my Gingham Gala craft box, which is available to order at the moment. Do remember that you need to place your order and payment needs to be made by the 3rd of April uh, or 1st of April if you are paying by cheque. All you need to do is send me an email which is the details of that are over on my blog and I will link to the original post I did about the craft box on the post that I am doing for this project. So this uses one of our really cute little narrow note cards and envelopes and I've also done the envelope I've put the patterned paper on the envelope as well so this uses the gingham gala pattern paper and I've used the one of the stamps from the your inspiring stamp set this just fits beautifully on the front of the card now obviously if you just wanted to do quick cards you could stamp on the front of the card direct and then use stamping stamping right markers not blends because blends obviously will bleed I say obviously blends will bleed whether it is obvious or not um, I shouldn't assume that you know that blends will bleed through to the back of the card so let's make one um, I have done some blue Peter so I have done some preparation beforehand but this will just show you how I put it all together so the stamp on an e-block, this is um, Tuxedo Memento Basic, Tuxedo Black uh, Memento Ink. Because it's a hard pad, I do do a bit of twisting as well as tapping, just to make sure that it is well inked. This is perfect for using with blends. Now I'm just going to pop this into this kind of odd space. This is just a scrap of paper. And there we are, beautiful stamp. Now this will, this will need to dry a wee bit before we colour it. So I'm going to pop this to one side while I show you how I've put the card together. So, which would have been so much easier had I actually remembered to bring a card across. Let me grab a card because I have some just sitting here. So here we are, here is one of our little cards. They measure four and a half by two and a half when they're folded. So they really are super cute. I've cut a piece of, this time I'm using the Grapefruit Grove designer series paper. You've got the choice of the small check or the large check. Because this is a, I want it as a sort of, just as a background rather than a statement, I'm using the small check. And I've cut this just a quarter of an inch smaller in each direction. So four and a quarter by two and a quarter inches. And then that will sit nicely on the front of my card with a little border round the edge. So let's pop that on. Now I like to do this sort of in a funny cack handed way but it just means that I can then visualise where everything is just a bit better. So there we go. So that is nicely on and I do all of this with the card flat because I just find it easier to do it with the card flat and then fold it. So that is that. I've got a small piece of the flax ribbon, the white flax ribbon. It is two and a half inches but cut at the angle. So you want to cut it at the angle rather than um, at two and a half inches because then you'll get the angle on other pieces as well. Um, if that makes sense it just means it's less waste. And just a bit of snail on that. I will be covering it up with the um, stamped image so there will be more to hold it in place. So that's kind of all we can do with the card at that stage. So colours. Now I have got the Daffodil Delight Duo, the Old Olive Duo. Actually I didn't use both. I didn't use the dark so let's pop that to one side. I only used the light, uh, the light soft suede and then the pumpkin pie duo. Now the soft suede may seem like a funny colour to have but this is just me being picky. When daffodils first come out they've got that kind of brown piece round the bud and that is 
what I'm doing with the, my soft suede. So that's all I'm doing. If you don't have the soft suede, don't worry about it, just colour it green. It's just me being me. And then I would just blend that into the green, um, so the old olive. But the more important bit for you to see are the flowers. I've done them both the same. It would help, of course, if I use the right end of the marker. I like the bullet end for this. So I'm using the pumpkin pie dark on the stamen as much as anything so they show. And then a bit of shadow there. And then I'm just adding just a bit of extra colour on the trumpet of the daffodil. And then with the dark daffodil delight, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the petals. Just to add a bit of colour and then on the underside of the bud. And then with the light pumpkin pie, I'm going to come in and blend the trumpet. Now daffodils and narcissi come in different colours so you can obviously pick up the colour of your choice. Some of them would look really great in um, petal pink. Uh, you could leave the um, leaves a paler yellow or a white. Uh, both of those would work and then do a, a nice dark a nice dark um, trumpet and then you've got those beautiful almost you know creamy white narcissi. The trumpet's a little large for that but I think we can get away with it. After all it's our project and we can do what we want. But I love that the daffodils have lasted so long this year. They were coming out before I had to go off to Norway and they're still around which is great. I thought I was going to miss them all, but some of them just come out later than others. So I'm not going to do the other daffodil at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to grab the the blend, the green blend, Old Olive, which is Old Olive Light, and just literally all I'm doing is following this, the leaves round. Do be careful with some of them because it's not totally obvious what is leaf and what is gap. So do make sure you follow the what you know is a leaf so I know that's a stalk so that can be coloured in and I know that's a leaf but from the top it may not be obvious what's leaf and what's stalk so again I know that comes up from the base and I know this comes up from the base so I can colour that but as I say when you're looking at all these lines it's not obvious that that's green and that's green, but that bit in the middle isn't. Anyway, that's the basic colouring. Um, you would then want to fussy cut, which is always so much easier with scissors. There we are. Now, what I tend to do with fussy cutting is actually cut out the, the sort of bulk piece first and then just come in and move the paper, not the scissors, just open and close the scissors and don't always look at exactly where you're cutting, look at where you're going to cut. So kind of guide yourself, I know I've got to come around here, so rather than concentrating on where the scissors are, I'm concentrating more on where I'm aiming for. Um, this was an old trick that we were taught at fashion college, uh, particularly when doing pattern cutting that um, it was a better way of making sure you went where you wanted to go. So just continue round. But Blue Peter, here we come. Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, I've also put um, dimensionals on the back with my lines. These bits don't have lines because um, they're just little off-cutty bits. So let's get the backings off those bits, then I know they're done. And then just peel the backings off those ones and then I have not worried about the white in the background um, I think it's fine personally to have that and then just pop that down there will be some bits that are loose but that's fine then grab your 
sequins which come in your kit. Now on this one I have used the iridescent balmy blue. For this one I'm going to use these are the iridescent uh, grapefruit grove and all I'm going to do is just with my snips pick one up. Now the other thing that you can use is the spatula of your take your pick tool. That's just as well, uh, just as good, in fact probably better. But if you don't have a take your pick tool yet, A, why not? They're brilliant. And B, um, if you don't, you can use your snips or a piercing tool. If you're using a piercing tool, oops, that's stuck on too well. And now I've taken the sequin off the piece of glue. So let's get that sorted out. Ooh, now it's going to be easier, I think, to just get a new sequin. Fortunately, I have quite a few still to choose from. Um, so, yes, just pop that up. And I like my triangle. So the, the take your pick tool, you've got putty at one end. So you've got this lovely um, semi-sticky at one end. And you get a spare putty. It lasts a long time if you keep the lid on. If you don't keep the lid on, that's going to get de-sticked, de-stucked, unsticky, and you're going to have to rub it off and bring a new piece through. So you've got your spatula, you've got your piercing tool, which is sharp. Those twist on and off, so you pop them on and twist. And then you also have, assuming I haven't buried it completely, which of course I have buried it on my desk. There we are. Um, you've got a double-ended embossing and a, and this. This is important for your piercing tool. Um, I would highly recommend keeping that on. And then this is for embossing and cut box making. You've got a large end and a small end. Brilliant little tool. Brilliant, brilliant. Right. OK, so we have our card. Let's fold that in half. And then on the back, just with your bone folder, and do, if you haven't got a bone folder, I highly recommend getting a bone folder. Um, it makes getting a crisp fold on your cards so much easier. Um, great for boxes, obviously. But So there's our card. And then, envelope flap. I've got a small piece of Grapefruit Grove here. It's one and a half inches long, uh, deep. And then you just need it for the width of the envelope which is two and three quarter inches and then just grab some snail again run it across the top and then just round the edge and then all you need to do is pop your paper on so that it's covering the flap and then from the back with your scissors just cut round and again Look at where you're going, not where you are, and then you're more likely to cut exactly what you want rather than a rough approximation. So just cut round and round, and there you go. Your matching Grapefruit Grove flap. So there we are. Just one little idea I've got for using the Gingham Gala craft box. As I say, place your order by sending me an email. It's UK only, I'm afraid. Um, I won't be able to send this overseas. I have had someone ask if I could send it to the States. Frankly, the postage would be crippling. Uh, so it's it ain't going to happen. Not that I can sell to the States, but even if I could, it would be horrific postage. Uh, the kit costs £21.50, including postage and packing. If you want to add stamp sets, dies or embossing folders, you can add those to the order and the postage will stay the same. Anything else, so like punches, even um, multi-liquid adhesive, because that then makes the box too fat for large letter, I would then need to have a look at the postage. And obviously a punch would, would increase the weight. So again, I'd have to look at the postage. Um, and it would in increase it so much um, that I would need to charge extra postage. But by all means, do add those on to the box if you would like. Thank you very much indeed for watching and putting up with my waffling. If you enjoyed the project, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more, please don't forget to subscribe. And 
all the measurements, details, etc., etc., are in the associated blog post, which is linked in the description bar below. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.